This is DeWalt's 18 volt cordless planner. Product code DCB980N. And the letter N in that code stands for that this item is purchased by itself with no batteries and charges included. And by itself, you can buy it for $325. AED. It is an 18 volt tool, so you will use it with your 18 volt batteries, which just slide in the back there behind the handle, completely out of the way, making it a nice secure fit. It's quite a light tool, 2.5 kilograms excluding the battery. Put that battery on, and it brings that weight up to around 3 kilograms. It is quite evenly distributed in weight, which is always such a good bonus in tools. You don't want it to be lagging you down and pulling your arm to one way when you use it. Obviously though, if you're planning walls or studs and you're moving it up and down above your head, you will get to feel that in your shoulder. The width of your planer is 82 millimeters and it can spin at 15,000 repetitions per minute. Obviously that number is gonna slow down once you bring it up to your workpiece and it has some drag and pressure applied to it. Even though we do have this key on the side to change our planer blades, we also do have a hex wrench which fits in there perfectly. You can spin it around a lot easier. Using it up in front of you or above your head, you're going to have a lot of saw chips, sawdust flying out. And it's got a right hand side ejaculation port and you can use one of DeWalt's vacuums to connect to that and make it dust free as you go. It doesn't give you the option to change which side your dust extraction point is. I've noticed in one of the Milwaukee battery planers I've recently used, you can flick it over and change which side that all the chips ejaculate out of. And that way when you're using it, if I'm standing on this side for some reason, I'm not gonna cop all of that into my face. So we look at the bottom of the tool, you can see where your planer blades are, and you've got a little wheel next to it where you can spin it around and then alter these hex head screws to take off the planer blades and rechange it. I have done a video on how to change the planer blades, not for this planer, from a Makita one, but the process is exactly the same. So if you're interested in that, I'll link the video in the description and then also at the end of this video if you want to jump on over there. I do have some planer blades by Makita and these are thicker in size as you can see, opposed to your small little ones you usually get. The reason I have these in is I use these when I'm straightening walls. Because if I'm going to hit a nail or hit some rough timber or knot or something, these planer blades are going to be stronger and they're not going to break as easy. If I'm doing something a little bit more detailed, if I'm trying to plane a door, plane an architrave, do something that's going to be seen and something I want to take a bit more care on and make it a bit neater, I'll use the typical planer blades you get with your dual planer that you can buy as well. The good thing about those small planer blades too is they fit right in here, which is a little storage area to keep some spare planer blades. Something which is super handy to have with you while you're on the site. And we can see next to it too, we have an Allen key which comes out and we can use that to reset blades and change blades over. When purchasing this tool, you also get a guide that slides in the front here, and that means you can attach it to the side of your work and have it run a straight course and only take out the section that you require to take out of the work. Something else that comes with it is a little jig that you can use to set your planer blades and have everything lined up perfectly. So even though you have your spare planer blades in here, you've got your Allen key to fix it, you don't have that jig with you, so I think it's it's cool in theory, but if you want to change your planer blades, you probably want to go back to your work truck, back to where your tools are, get that jig up, sit down and properly do it. It's not like it's a quick fix like changing a grinder blade over. I do think it's a bit more of a detailed process of sitting down, getting it right and changing it over. And you do want to have that jig with you while you do it. Like the majority of DeWalt tools, it does have a nice handle, a good comfy grip to hold. And you've got a safety lever right here, which you need to push down before you activate that trigger. Once you activate that trigger, you don't need to hold down that lever anymore, the trigger stays down, which just limits you accidentally knocking that and cutting yourself. I have worked with a couple people that have injured themselves with the planer. It always leaves a very nasty cut, so it's a tool you really want to make sure you've been safe around. And don't put down until it's finished spinning. Even when the blade's finished spinning, you don't want to put it down on a nice piece of work and have that blade dig into the work, which is why they've got this little rest at the back of your planer here. This rest flicks down when you put your planer down and that holds the planer up so your blades don't touch the surface, which keeps your work neat, it doesn't damage or dent your work. But once again, if you're putting it on a hard surface like a concrete slab, it's not gonna dull your blade either. Sometimes this gets stuck up when I try to plane some studs and try to plane some things, but most of the time you pull your planer up, it gets knocked down and it's out of your way. It's an awesome little thing to have even though it does get stuck up a couple times. I'm definitely happy that it is here. Obviously this big dial at the front as well is something we can all see and that is changing the depth of your planer blades. 
starts at zero millimeters and you can twist it all the way around to two millimeters. Depending on how you set your blades, you can set them wrong and this dial isn't always gonna be true to the measurement. I use it more as a rough indication on how deep I'm going. But if you wanna get a perfect amount out of a material, definitely use this on a rough off-cut piece of material. See what depth of the material you are actually planning out when it's set on various, various different measurements and work out from there to see how true these measurements are. I would not go off those thinking that they're spot on accurate. This ejaculation port does seem to have a very good tendency of getting filled up with all your wood chip off cuts. And I feel like there's a lot of times that you get a pencil or a nail punch in there and always clearing it out. Because once that gets filled up, you're gonna plane something and instead of going through and coming out the side, it's just gonna erupt and sort us just going everywhere. And I don't wanna be braving that on. I do recommend using a face mask when you're using this, especially if you're gonna have fine sawdust of growing around everywhere, you do not want to be breathing that in. I did get this tool in that big combo kit of DeWalt tools I have. I've done a couple of videos on my Makita Corded Planner, which has since actually broken. And I did have a problem completely on my behalf of that tool breaking down. So when I got this planner instead, I decided to do my first lockup straight in walls using this planner and see how it went instead. Obviously the biggest factor I'm looking out for when I was doing this is how many batteries did I go through. And I think on the average day, I did a few days of using this, I'd go through four pushing onto the five batteries per day mark, which means if you've only got one or two five amp batteries, 18 volt batteries, it is gonna be a lot of changing them over constantly. And by the time it gets to the end of the day, the batteries aren't gonna charge up as quick as you're going through them. So that's a problem. If you only have a couple of these batteries, this tool won't be able to stay up to the test and operating all day. You can use your 54 volt batteries, your larger batteries on this tool. They still work in this tool. Uh, the only downside to that is it adds on a lot more weight. And if you're straddling studs, it's gonna start to feel like a gym workout. I do luckily have enough batteries to sustain this tool, keep it running. And I personally would rather walk to where my batteries are, put another one on charge, bring another one back here, rather than running the lead and going through the trouble of having to move the lead around, move it from different rooms, move it to different units. I do think this is a more practical approach. Overall, I'm very happy and content with this tool. I'm not gonna go out of my way and go and replace my old Makita planer. Not that there's anything wrong with that build. This isn't a comparison video, but I do think that my DeWalt battery planner is up to the job of replacing it and I do want to try to get my collections away from using cords. Thanks for watching this review. I'd love to know what planners you use, what your favorite brand is, and if you are switching over to batteries for your planners or if you're still using the corded planners. Thanks for watching this video and remember to check out my video on how to change a planer blade on my Makita planer, which is exactly the same process as this DeWalt planer as well.